beneath the sunlit waves. Sea lions come alive, their playful nature captivating all. Though often called sea lions, sea puppies might suit them a little better. Like us, they need oxygen, inhaling as they break the surface. A dance perfected through time. But how long could this dance last? Some sea lions dive 300 meters or 984 feet deep, holding their breath for up to 20 minutes. These sea pups venture onto land, unlike seals. Walking gracefully, they could stay ashore indefinitely if not lured by the ocean's bounty. Breeding, nurturing young, and molting draw them to the shore's embrace. Males guard for 27 days during mating season, while new mothers rest for 10 days cradling their young. Within a marine cathedral, stellar sea lions hold court. This underground amphitheater is tall as a 12-story building and wide as a football field is their sanctuary. Barking echoes off the walls, a seasonal performance played against the backdrop of shifting tides. It's America's largest sea cave. It's where untamed beauty meets the terrestrial. Highway 101 winds along Oregon's coast, revealing the sea lion caves 11 mile, 18 kilometer, north of Florence, Oregon. Perched 300 feet or 91 meters above the Pacific, it's the gateway to the world's largest sea cave. Florence, a coastal gem, stands where the river and the ocean meet. Here, stellar sea lions script their saga, a timeless conversation with land and sea. Winter is their time, their silhouettes gracing the coastal theater. A digital prelude in the gift shop offers a glimpse into their world. Even without the sea lions, the cave's charm remains with trails for bird watching and whale spotting. As you venture within, there's a grand chamber of two acres. It emerges, its rock dome reaching 125 feet into the air or 38 meters high. A submerged passage stretches 1,000 feet, 300 meters southward. A dance floor for tides. From above, the entire saga unfolds. A tableau of rock and life. The history of sea lion caves is as captivating as the creatures that inhabit it. In 1880, Captain William Cox, a local seafarer, stumbled upon the cave's hidden realm while sailing through the western channel. The tranquil waters led him into its embrace a discovery that would spark tales of bravery and adventure. Captain Cox returned multiple times to explore the cave's mysteries, even enduring harsh weather and strong seas that stranded him for several days. According to legend, he survived by shooting a baby sea lion and subsisting on its flipper meat. Regardless of the tale's authenticity, Captain Cox's connection to the cave was undeniable. In 1887, he purchased the land from the state of Oregon, a legacy that endured all the way up until 1926. From these humble beginnings, R. E. Clanton, along with partners J. G. Houghton and J. E. Jacobson, embarked on a journey to transform the cave into a sanctuary. It was an era when roads were scarce, and the rugged landscape held untamed secrets. In 1932, their vision came to life as the cave was unveiled to the public, a testament to human determination and the desire to share nature's wonders. The cave's fame spread, overcoming the challenges of World War II that briefly silenced leisure travel. R.A. Saubert continued the legacy, and in 1961, an elevator was erected, transporting visitors into the heart of the cave's beauty. This elevator, a symbol of progress, carried with it the promise of accessibility and awe. Today, the sea lions share their cave with seabirds, crafting a symphony within the cavern's vaulted expanse. From the tales of ancient mariners to modern-day marvels, sea lion caves stand as a testament to nature's enduring allure. As you ponder the sea lions' antics and stop to visit them in the state of Oregon, just remember, why don't sea lions use computers? Because they're afraid of the net. These are interesting things with J.C.